Recent estimates tell us that more than 3.2 million children in Uganda are orphans. That means there's no parent, no grandparent, no aunt or uncle that can step in to help raise them. These precious children are left hungry, without shelter, and so very vulnerable to all sorts of things. So today, on this edition of the Edge of Adventure podcast, I'd like us to travel to this African nation as we get to know Paul Hansen, the executive director of Hands of Love Foundation. It's an inspiring organization doing remarkable work, making a very real difference as they care for so many of Uganda's orphans, feeding them, giving them a place to call home, an education, a place to play, to be safe, and most importantly, the opportunity to know what it's like to be truly loved. Coming up next, Paul Hansen from Hands of Love on this edition of the Edge of Adventure podcast. Paul Hansen of Hands of Love, thank you so much for joining the program today. Great to see you. Well, great to see you, Adam, and uh, thanks for uh, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Well, thank no, you. thank you. Thanks for taking the time. You and I met a couple of years back. I know you have a heart and a passion for Uganda and mm -hmm. especially the children of of Africa and the ones that are hurting and in need. Give us the overview. Um, you know, well, what do they call it in the business? The elevator pitch. Tell us mm -hmm. what a Hands of Love is in a nutshell, and then it's going to be my job to dig a little deeper. All right. Well, uh, Hands of Love, it, they're, it's a Ugandan um, ministry that was founded by Ugandans, run by Ugandans, and managed by Ugandans. It started uh, probably... 16, 17 years ago, uh, a calling that uh, Pastor Elijah and his wife Ruth received. He was starting his church ministry and he saw the destitute children of Uganda wandering from nowhere to nowhere. And it just burdened his heart saying, well, you know, what can I do to help these kids? And he got a word from God that God told him that, hey, Elijah, I want you to be the hands of love for these destitute children. And that's how that's how Hands of Love started. And it's blossomed into two orphanages. And there's about 2,600 children that uh, we take care of in those two orphanages today. So it's uh, been a nice success story so far. Well, you use the word destitute, right? And when we describe things like that, uh, sometimes those of us maybe who, you know, we've grown up in, uh, great situations, right? We, we Maybe our our life hasn't been destitute. So put it into context. What does that mean when you say it's destitute? What are these children in Uganda facing? Well, it started uh, the, the history of Uganda when they got their independence, things were rolling along. And then I think most people our age uh, remember Idi Amin that came in and kind of destroyed the economy of the country. And then after he was uh, escorted out of office, so to speak, then the um, AIDS epidemic hit. And I believe Congo and Uganda were ground zero for the AIDS epidemic. And what that did is it virtually wiped out a generation of people. So when you wipe out a generation of people, then all that's left are our children. So 50% of Uganda's population have children that are 15 years or younger, and they have 3.2 million of them that are orphans. And orphan definition over there is they don't have any parents, any relatives. So they're wandering the streets daily, just surviving, looking for food, a handout. They are wandering from nowhere to nowhere. They don't have any, any place to go or any, any hope for a future. So by taking care of these destitute children, we get them off the street and provide them with food, clothing, shelter, a Christ-based education, and love and nurturing and security. So destitute is pretty destitute, absolutely. They don't have any government programs to uh, help take care of them either. So it's, uh, they're, they're pretty much on their own. I know for you, Paul, this particular journey started almost 
two years ago, I think. Right. What was it um, that won you over? What was it that drew you in so that you knew this is this is how I need to serve? Well, it started uh, probably seven or eight years ago for a reason I can't understand and not placed on this earth to understand everything is God put Uganda on my heart. And I accused him then that he just went, you know, spun the globe and threw a dart and said, yep, Uganda, because I've never been to Africa, never, never been to a third world country or, or a developing country. So he put Uganda on my heart. So I being obedient was pursuing it and pursuing it. And a couple opportunities presented themselves, but didn't pan out. And then uh, a couple of Februarys ago, I'm sitting in um, a hotel room with my wife and son and daughter-in-law and our grandkids. We put to bed and we're just sitting there talking. We're at Disney World, by the way. And my daughter-in-law gets a text message or an email that's, uh, and she says, man, this has you written all over it. And it was a position for the executive director of Hands of Love in Atlanta. So I pursued it. And three months later, after meeting all the board of directors and the current director, then um, I was hired. And shortly thereafter, I was on the ground in Uganda. So it was, uh, um, and since that time, it's just been, I mean, it's been, a total and complete blessing, a blessing. I mean, you, you get on the ground over there and it's just totally and completely different than anything that I could have ever imagined, even showing or seeing videos of it. Uh, it just doesn't do it justice when you, when you get on the ground over there and see, see what's going on. And it's, uh, then you, you have an opportunity to visit with the kids in the, in the uh, orphanages. Uh, we like to refer to them as schools. And they are so full of joy and happiness and peace, you know, and they they've come from nothing and they are just happy, happy, happy. And that just I mean, it just tugs at your heart and uh, just you just can't help but get involved and fall in love with what's going on over there. It was just just a, a mind mind changing and uh, spiritual uh, changing life experience for me. Yes. This is the Edge of Adventure podcast, and we are talking today with Paul Hansen. Paul is the executive director at Hands of Love Foundation, and of course, is uh, already established. They work in Uganda. Uh, Paul, if someone from a Western country were to fly in there and let's say hypothetically they were to you know go go on a trip with you guys and they were to go to the facilities. Walk me through that experience. I know that for you, there was a time where that you were experiencing that for the first time. Mm -hmm. What's that like? I mean, what really, what, you know, what hit you as being particularly moving or memorable? Well, the, the first thing that, that hit me is, uh, it landed in, uh, in Tebby, the airport there. And it was like midnight. Yeah. <laughs> It was like an hour or so drive to the, to the airport. So it's pitch black. You know, they don't have street lights and well-lit roads. And it was probably one o'clock in the morning, dusty and dirty. And then all along the roads heading to, to the hotel where I was staying was uh, little huts and shops that people into, you know, individual mom and pop organizations. They were out there selling anything from jewelry to baskets to, cooking street meat out in front, which the smoke was adding to the dust. And it was just dark, but at one o'clock in the morning and everybody was still out, you know, wandering around or shopping or whatever. Then the uh, next day when I uh, had the opportunity to get up and they pick you up at the hotel and took me over to the, uh, the orphanage and it was just um, bumpy, ruddy roads getting there. And then you turn the corner and you come into into the uh, orphanage and it has a, a gate and a wall for protection. And you just see all the kids there that are there welcoming you. And it is just an awesome experience. I, I guess that you almost felt, you almost feel like a rock star walking in there because they're all over you, hugging you and grabbing on you. And you can tell in their eyes that it, it wasn't something that they were, 
put up to do. It was something that you can see it in their eyes that they really, really enjoyed having you show up at, at the orphanage. And I mean, it was just, I mean, if it doesn't bring a tear to your eye, you're just, you're just not human when, when you, when you see the, the looks on their faces and how happy they are to, to see you and greet you. It was just an awesome, awesome experience. And it just got better from there. And we're looking now at the video here. So these are the faces. These are the precious faces that you see when you travel over there and you go to Uganda and you go to the facilities. And these are the kinds of faces you saw that first time that you went. Um, I have to think, as I look at this video, I, the thing that hits me the most is just what a difference it must make in the lives of these kids just to know they're loved. It's, um, it's huge. It's huge. They have never experienced that in their life or it, it's something they don't remember. And then they come to the hands of love school and orphanage and they have somebody who cares about them. And the one of the main pillars of hands of love is child sponsorship and having these children have sponsors here in the U S just gives them the feeling that they are loved by somebody. And I asked the question to one of the uh, sponsorship team when I was over there, you know, I'm saying, okay, these, these kids have sponsors and the sponsors send letters to them and, and gifts for, you know, birthday and Christmas. Do they really view those sponsors as parents or are they just like the gifts they get and stuff? And the response was they view the sponsor as their parents. They actually do. And they love receiving cards and letters from them. They love sitting down and writing to them. And she says what's what breaks her heart is if all of a sudden a sponsor is sponsoring a child and then to, due to some circumstances, they can't continue to sponsor and have to stop. That child feels abandoned again, like wait a minute, the, my friend next to me still has their parents and what happened to mine? So we have to find another sponsor for them. So they truly view sponsors as their parents and somebody that they, even though they're 7,500, 8,000 miles away, they, they feel that connection with them and feel that somebody truly, truly loves them for who they are. It's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. So, what is the price point for sponsorship? You guys uh, ask, I'm guessing, right? For a certain amount right. per month. Yeah. The basic needs for a child is $50 a month. And that gets them through um, primary school. So they call it over there. And then when they go into high school or secondary school, uh, the cost goes up to uh, 115 because it costs a lot more to educate a, a high school student than uh, one that that's younger. I mean, they have test fees that they they have to take care of, plus the supplies are a lot more. So the, the cost goes up to 115 dollars when they reach high school. But the basic needs is 50 dollars to start. Okay, so other than the financial support which you said the initial ask is $50 a month. Other than that, what do you ask of the sponsors? What, what do you want and need from them other than the financial support? It's to, to stay connected with, with the children. I mean, they love receiving cards and letters and, and notes and pictures from their sponsors. Cause you know, some of the sponsors, you know, they'll have family. So it's, it's nice for the, their sponsored child over there to see, a mom and dad and two kids that are sponsoring them. So they view as, okay, I'm one of three children of this family now. And they just love receiving it. And when you hand them those pictures and just the look on their face and the smiles that it brings to their face when they see it and you go into their dorm rooms and you see the pictures leaning up on their bed frames or, you know, taped to the bed frame of their, their sponsors and their families. They just, they just love to, to hear from him and stay, stay in connection with them. Absolutely. And we are talking today here on the Edge of Adventure podcast with Paul Hansen, Executive Director of Hands of Love. They, of course, work in Uganda. 
And Paul, um, a friend of mine, has uh, been with the organization now for a couple of years, and he's already been sharing a little bit about how, uh, how the people and the culture and the work just you know, won his heart. Um, Paul, as you look ahead now for what might be coming next, what are some of the things that you guys have on the agenda? You know, the things you dream of, the things you're praying about. Mm -hmm. Knowing, of course, 2020, if it taught us anything, it taught us you just don't know what is right around the corner. But setting those kind of contingencies aside, what are you guys thinking about and planning for the next few years? Well, first and foremost is we want to continue to increase the number of children that are sponsored. Right now we have, as I said, around 2,600 children under roof. Uh, Pastor Elijah's goal is to have 6,000 by 2025. And right now we have about 1,000 of those 2,600 that have sponsors. So, you know, we're desperate need of sponsors for the additional 1,600 plus the other whatever that number is, other 3,000 plus in the next uh, in the next five years. Some of the other directions that we're moving in is as, as we the, the children in the orphanages start to age, get a little older, um, we see more of a need for um, a bifurcated approach to education. Um, before the focused, the focus has always been on um, college prep, getting the, you know, the test scores there and the kids ready to be able to, to go to college. And what we found out is these, as these, some of these children are getting older, young teenagers and stuff, a lot of them don't really, don't really want to go to college. They, they much rather develop a trade to where they can go out and start their own business, become an entrepreneur. So the big focus right now is, is a vocational college on campus. Right now we provide vocational education to several of our students, but they have to go off campus to receive that, which is, it's expensive uh, to do that because we got to pay a fee for them to, to go to those vocational schools. Plus we kind of lose, you know, these are teenagers and they're in an impressionable age. And by having them off campus, they're subjected to all the goings on in, in the real world out there. And we'd much rather have them have that education on campus. So the goal that we have is to establish a vocational college on campus that will provide uh, trades for the most needs over there, which would be like masonry and bricklaying, carpentry, electricians, um, auto, automobile mechanics, uh, beauticians, nursery school and daycare um, trades, um, seamstresses for to make clothing. Those are the ones that are going to be focused on to begin with, because that's where the most need is in Uganda right now. And Uganda is never really going to get out of that, that cycle of abject poverty if it doesn't have a good quality, skilled labor force to, to do the work. So that's the other reason that we we're working on that vocational college to bring it on campus. And by having it on campus, we continue to instill in them the the Christ centered beliefs that that we feel are important to to change the direction of the of the country as well. Paul, as you and I have spoken in in times past, I know that you also have great respect for the staff, the people that mm -hmm. work there. Tell me about the kinds of people, the kinds of dedication that you see from from the people on the ground. Um, who are they? What you know? What do they? Where do they call home? And what what's it like seeing their level of dedication? Uh, the level of dedication is just it's mind blowing. It really is. And my first visit over there, then I mean, God just started tugging on me about the staff. Because without the staff, you don't have the school, you don't have the education for the kids. And these individuals, some of them, some of them work there and don't even get paid. But they have it on their heart that this is what God called them to do is to teach these children. And 
I'm the, just the loving and nurturing they provide along with the, the classroom educational aspect is just so fulfilling when you, when you see them and you can just tell when you're in a classroom with the teachers, you can just tell that they love what they do. They love the children. And it's not just about the money. It's, it's about taking care of the kids and giving them an education and a start that, you know, that they probably didn't have when they were at that age and had to work continuously extra hard to get there to where they are today. So, you know, the staff is, is very important and uh, we would love to be able to, to be able to pay all of them the, the, uh, the money they, they deserve because they, they are really and truly angels, angels on earth and the work they do there. And we're not talking just about teachers. We're talking about, you know, the cooks, the facility people, the counselors, the drivers, the administration people. I mean, it's just, they're all just, they're all just fantastic at what they do. And we just love them to death and appreciate them dearly. In this particular picture that just uh, popped up on the screen, for those of you watching this, and if you're listening on the audio podcast, um, listen, I'm a radio guy actually by trade, so uh, I love the audio podcast. But if you get the opportunity to pop over to YouTube and, and participate that way, watch it uh, with us, you get to see some of these pictures because they haven't figured out how to do pictures on audio yet. <laughs> uh, but so here's this wonderful picture. The guy's wearing a mask. Uh, yeah, that reminds me that, okay, we, we've got the global pandemic. We've got COVID-19 and um, it's affected everybody everywhere. How's it affected you guys and how are you dealing with it? Well, first and foremost, it uh, the government came out and said that you can't have, you can only have X number of people in one place. So we have you know, 1,300 kids in each one of our orphanages. So what immediately had to happen is they had to be redistributed. And you're like, well, where do they go? So what happened is the uh, the church, uh, Kampala International Christian Center, which is Pastor Elijah's church, some of the congregants have taken some of the children to their homes during this uh, pandemic. The staff has taken children home and then they've been filtered out to certain foster families that have been been vetted. So that has caused some uh, additional burdens in itself. And so now the staff, what they have to do is they're going around doing wellness checks with all these kids scattered out all in, in Kampala and even out in the rural community in Namadi to make sure that they're being taken care of and they're continuing to do their studies and they're getting the right the, the proper food and those type things. So it's put an additional burden on the staff as well. Uh, the picture that you pointed to there is the one thing that's also happened is uh, the areas outside of the uh, orphanages, they're struggling too because the country shut down. And when you live day to day and you make a dollar 25 on average a day, and then all of a sudden your employment goes away, you don't have food. So one of the things that Pastor Elijah did is he started an outreach called the Love Link Project to help provide support to the people that are surrounded surrounding the uh, the orphanages because they see the the kids eating there they know that you know we have food for them and they're out there starving so he provided this outreach to through again our generous sponsors and donors to provide food and sanitary product like soaps and stuff to the village people outside the campuses so they can see that it's it's not only you know our heart for the children but it, it's god's work that we're doing and uh and we can help them as well what is the motivation behind hands of love and i mean what drives this desire to serve it's we just know that it's it's God's ministry. It's it's God's ministry, and He calls us to to do certain things. And sometimes we go in, you know, you know, crying, kicking, and screaming. But you know, being obedient to His needs is is what drives this. And it's if we can do something for somebody else that helps them 
become a better person or to help them survive, then it's up, up to us to do that. So we go out into the, into the communities and provide, as I said, soaps and food for people. We also, you know, take care of our children and we we're teaching and ingraining these beliefs into these children that, you know, it's not only about you, it's about, your fellow students. It's about the community that we're all in this. We're all in this mess together, and uh, we just need to help each other in any way we possibly can. And by doing just a little something extra means a world of difference to to some of these people in these communities. So tell me about Pastor Elijah. It, what is his role? You're the executive director. You've been there for, again, I, like I said, you started serving there in this capacity a couple of years back. Uh, but Pastor Elijah, who is he? What is his role in Hands of Love there in Uganda? Well, Pastor Elijah is is the founder. And I think I mentioned earlier what he was a, uh, he had a church ministry. And as I said, he saw all the children wandering around that just put a huge burden on him. He, uh, he was, I think, uh, one of 38 children and his uh, father had 12 wives. Polygamy is still an issue in Uganda, especially in the rural areas. And he was born in a swamp and his, uh, his mom just refused to let him die and kept putting you know, thoughts in his head about you were made to, you know, to be a leader and you're going to make a difference in this country. And it, uh, it proved, it proved out. He, he started with $10 in his pocket and a piece of inherited land from, I believe it was his grandfather. And it was out in the rural area. Him and his wife, Ruth went out there and built seven wattle huts, the mud huts with the straw roofs. And two weeks later, there was 188 kids there that they took under roof that started the whole, the whole process. So he has, he has a, a huge heart for, for the children of Uganda and for the country of Uganda. And uh, his drive and motivation is he, he works for the Lord and he's doing the Lord's work and how whatever he can do to advance God's kingdom and to provide protection and security and a Christ-based education to develop the future leaders of Uganda, then that's, that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. It's amazing. It's an amazing story. And so once we clear COVID-19 and we get back to some sense of normalcy, you guys will be able to bring the the students and the kids back onto the facility and right that would be that'd be the first thing right as soon as we clear yeah. covid 19 you want to get that reestablished right yes absolutely okay. yeah. paul time for a philosophical question here <laughs> what breaks your heart about what you see in uganda yeah it's just uh i don't know it just seeing the the kids just, as I said, wandering from nowhere to nowhere. You want to, you want to help them all. You do, and you just can't. And that's, uh, you know, that's Pastor Elijah always says. You know, you, you can't do everything, but we can all do something. And uh, you can't, if you look at just the magnitude of the the poverty, um, it would, it would, it, it would just tear your heart out. But then when you see the difference when you see the transformation from a child that's been on the street that is you get the backstory of that child that you see that he's in at part of hands of love and you see how healthy they are and how happy they are and just full of love and joy then it just you know it just makes you feel so much so much better that she's if for every child you can get off the street and into hands of love that they have, they do have a hope, hope for the future, knowing that they're loved and nurtured. And there is, there is something better out there than what they have experienced as a, as a young child. A couple other things that we are involved in too, that need to mention is um, we also have a baby's home that we take in babies that are from newborns to three to four years old. And then once they turn to four years old, they go over to the 
to the main uh, main campus for uh, um, housing and education. But the baby's home, they have, I believe, 18 babies in there now. And when I visited that, that place, it was just amazing seeing all the kids there. You know, they're all sitting on a blanket eating lunch when you're in there. And they're all handing me food, you know, with their hands all with the rice all grubbed in it stuff it was it was pretty interesting but then Domily, the director of the baby's home i sat next to her and she went through each child and told me obviously their name and their story how they how they got the hands of love one was found in a trash heap that was three weeks old the police found it in a trash heap just cast away Another one was like a less than a year old standing out in the muddy street, pouring rain all by himself, crying. And every, every story she went through, one was just more heart wrenching than the other. But then you look at those 18 babies sitting there and you see how happy and healthy they are. You just, you know, thank God for, for the work that they're doing. The other thing that we have is a Hands of Love Medical Center that's outside of Kampala. And the medical center caters to women and children because they're the ones that have the most need. They're still considered second class citizens and have no value in the majority of, of Uganda. So we provide medical services for them. And on average, I, I think uh, if I got this right, I may be a little bit of an over exaggeration, but I don't think it is. I think I heard it right that they deliver on average of uh, five babies a day out of this medical center. And the medical center only has like nine beds in it. So uh, the work that they do is is phenomenal uh, there. And they take care of uh, the medical needs for our children and staff as well at that medical center. So there's a, a lot of good things that, are, that have happened over the last 10, 15 years at Hands of Love. Well, we are certainly thankful for what you do and the team there. It's so encouraging. I know that you have, you're in a position of leadership and to, to hear you talk so uh, carefully and, and lovingly about the staff, knowing that if those guys on the ground there, the ones that, that, that are working there day in and day out, if they're not doing their job and doing it well, then none of this works. Right. Sure. And um, I appreciate that about you and, just the, the heart that you have for the kids and the appreciation you have for Elijah, Pastor Elijah and the staff, and then all the people around the world who come alongside you guys and encourage you and support you financially to help you make this difference to the kids. So other than sponsorship, we've talked about that price point of $50. Sometimes it goes up a little bit uh, as the kids get older, but the starting price point of $50 a month is a commitment to sponsor you want to have a relationship. You want the, the those who do sponsor the kids to also have a relationship with them and interact with them and, and let them feel that that they're a part of, of their family. It's not just a check that you're writing. It's it's a commitment to these kids. What else, Paul, as, as we get close to the end of our time here, what else do, do does the audience need to know about Hands of Love and their work in Uganda? Yeah, I guess it's, uh, yeah, it's just... The work they're doing to help change the direction of the country is is what's really the most important. It, to get rid of the, as I mentioned, some of the problems they have, to get rid of the, you know, there's witchcraft and polygamy and all those kind of things that are still going on to, to get the students under roof and to help them become the future leaders of the country is the only way that that country is going to get out of that, that vicious cycle, downward spiral of abject poverty. So any any support that anybody can provide is, uh, um, is a blessing. And it's not just financial support, it's spiritual support too. I mean, prayer, prayer is powerful and a big part of this ministry. And we, we understand that uh, prayer, prayer makes things happen. So if, if you can't participate financially, we ask that you just, you know, participate prayerfully and uh, and let God do the rest. It's it's his ministry. It's not Elijah's ministry or my ministry or the staff's ministry. It's God's ministry. And we are just we're just put in place to to follow his lead in what direction he wants us to go. 
Well, it has been my privilege and pleasure today to have as the guest for this edition of the Edge of Adventure podcast, Paul Hansen. Paul is the executive director at Hands of Love, and you can find out information about that foundation, Hands of Love Foundation, uh, by going online, look them up at handsoflove.com. I'm sorry, handsoflovusa.org, pulling it up on the screen here, handsoflovusa.org to find out more, find out how you can help, come alongside them, pray for them, keep up with all that they're doing, and be a part of their mission and their work in Uganda. As I have mentioned, I'd also highly encourage you guys, look them up on Facebook and Instagram. It's a great way to connect with them and also just to uh, get the news, right? I mean, in the old days for these kind of things, it used things used to be exclusively via newsletters or you know, mailing lists and things like that. And um, those are the days that are, um, uh, it's not the same anymore. Now with social media, they can get news to you and great stories to you immediately by following them online. And uh, also look them up at uh, Twitter there, slightly different handle for Twitter, Hands of Love USA 1. Um, Paul, I mean, with that, I just want to again say thank you. I appreciate you and your friendship. I appreciate what you do, your leadership, your love for the people and the kids of Uganda. And um, again, I'm thankful for the time you took today to chat with me and share your heart and your vision for Uganda with the audience today. Appreciate it. Awesome to uh, have with us today, Paul Hansen of Hands of Love and their service and their work in Uganda. Thank you again, Paul. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in, for being a part of today's broadcast. Uh, God love you. God bless you. And we will see you again next time right here on the Edge of Adventure podcast.